Hello YouTube, this is Brown Owls Tech Tips and we're going to show you the install and usage of Linux Mint 18 Cinnamon. This is going to be a clean install first and then the next one I'll show you how to do some of the configuration of it, install software and various other things. So first things first, if you let it just do the auto boot, the first thing it's going to do is boot into Linux Mint. If you touch the up or down arrow key, you get this. You can either boot from local drive, do a memory test, an integrity check of the install media, an OEM install, which is for manufacturers, so that way you're not actually setting up a user or anything else. You're just installing Linux Mint to the system, and then whenever the user purchases the system, they do the, in, do the configuration and set up from there on their end. You can start it up in compatibility mode or just flat out start Linux Mint, which is what we're going to do. Alright, once it starts up, you'll actually be setting at the Linux Mint desktop. You see that it's running it in software rendering mode right now, not hardware. And it's connected to a wired network at this moment. So from here, we can actually fire up different things. You can go through the menu and look at stuff, see what all is currently set up for it. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run install. Now if you just want to play around on Linux Mint without doing an install, running it live like this on a USB drive is 100% possible and it is 100% usable. It even comes complete with Office. It has Firefox and for Office it's using Libre. So it's 100% ready to go if you configured the... Uh, if you're using a USB drive and you configured it to have persistent storage then with the persistent storage you can actually install updates and things like that into the persistent storage um, it's kind of useful like that as just a live drive where the base OS itself really can't be changed but you can still install updates and other applications so once it loads it'll look to that persistent storage to load the newer files so we're gonna go ahead and run install Linux Mint okay and we're gonna say English continue we're going to go ahead and let it install what third-party software it needs to for graphics, Wi-Fi, Flash, MP3, and other media. And we're going to go ahead and do the simple setup instead of building it ourselves. This is all that's going to be on here and the amount of RAM that's in it is not going to change. So we're going to tell it to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. I'm not going to do encrypt the new Linux Mint installation for security. So we're going to click install now. And whenever I do the one for Linux Mint Mate instead of Cinnamon, I will actually go in and configure the drive myself. So there will be videos of both methods. So it says write changes to disk, click continue. The reason with the uh, comment on the amount of RAM is whenever you're first doing the install, the amount of RAM determines how large it automatically makes the swap file. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, it's going to make the swap file a fairly decent size. Usually it's going to equal, the swap partition will equal exactly the same amount of RAM that you have. So that's why I said that. Otherwise, you will have to go in and set a custom. So if you plan on upgrading your RAM at a later point in time, you'll want to put in a custom drive configuration. So once it comes to the time zone, it says, where are you? Select where you're at in the time zone you're in. Click continue. This should automatically select your keyboard layout. If it doesn't, you can click in here and start typing and it'll detect the keyboard layout. Or you can just type in there to test. So either way, if you need to detect, click detect keyboard, start typing, it'll pick it out. Or you can just click in there and start typing. This is, I've never had any problem with the automatic so far on standard keyboards. So it should be correct click continue once you have your keyboard layout set and now it's going to ask for the name so you're going to set up the first user remember your user your user actually acts as two user entities on Linux Mint your user account is both super user and standard user so whenever you log in you are standard user and you have to elevate yourself up to super user with your same username and password to use super user functions as root you are not root itself but you are a super user 
Okay, and you see how you can encrypt your home folder? At least you can do this encryption without causing any problems. This encrypts after the o or this decrypts after the OS loads. So I am going to select encrypt my home folder so at least my personal files are protected. And you can select login automatically if you really want it to just automatically log in. Like if you're going to be a single user, you're not worried about security, you really don't do anything stupid with it or anything special like bank accounts or anything like that, you should be fine. Now just click continue. And now it's installing the system. I will be back with you all shortly. This is going to take a little while. Uh, depending upon the system, it can take anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour. Um, some systems I've actually had install like on solid state drives in as little as five to eight minutes. But like I said, depending upon the system, it can take anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour. I'll see you shortly. All right, and once it is actually finished, welcome back by the way. All you gotta do is hit restart now. It says please remove the install medium and press enter. You can see it's already ejected it. So all we gotta do is hit enter. All right, and then it reboots. And once it finally loads all the way up, it'll be sitting at the login screen, and you'll log in for the first time. There's the login screen. Log in and poof, voila. You are up and running. Now you can go through these, there's your apps, drivers, blah, 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 blah. Or you could just deselect that and not see that anymore at startup. If you like to see it at startup, you can leave it or deselect it. I generally get rid of it. And there it is. Linux Mint is now installed on your desktop You are or your laptop. You are set up and ready to go. This information is out there for absolutely everybody. As always, watch, like, and share. Have yourselves a good day.